you're not on the field. Yeah. Or, or ice. Or on the couch. Can you get to DC? This is Coaching from the Couch with your host, C. Wall. Delivering coverage for yes. all DC sports teams from the hometown yes. perspective. Nats, Skins, Mystics, DC United, Washington Wizards, Caps. My name's C. Wall, and I'm a PG girl. Down for my skins. I don't know if you heard. If you like watching sports, then I am your girl. Sit down on the couch if you're not on the field. Cold on the ice. Pick any sport that you want. Know that I cover it tight. What would you like? From baseball to football and more. The list can't go on the whole night. Big shouts out to my HBCU fam. Never forget who I am through the wins and the losses, the highs and the lows. We gotta stay strong, so I stay ten toes. Make the competition. Back, back, the way I kick it make them mad, man. See, while that we live and die, wreck. Sit back on the couch and relax. Come on. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Coaching from the Couch. This is your DMV Sports weekly update and i am your host c wall and as always it is my pleasure to join you all each week to give you all of the updates and the highlights of what is happening this week in dmv sports okay so i see that folks are already checking in and saying hello you know the c wall team is already added in the chat Everyone say hello to Joy. And also, I see my mom is always checked in. Please say hello to her. I'm also saying that DJ is not feeling that well. DJ, please feel better. Prayers to you. Thank you so much for tuning in, even though you're not feeling well. We absolutely appreciate that so much. Who else? Who else? Who else? I see Lash. I see the Seawall Chaplain, Mazdak. Make sure you say hello to him. I see Cameron Mingo has bought his ticket for the fifth anniversary event. Listen, shout out to you, Cameron Mingo. Look, you guys, Sunday, March 6th. Okay, everybody hit, it, hit the love button because we got to hit the love button. And then make sure you are tagging and sharing this information, not just all the DMV Sports Weekly updates, but make sure you're sharing that it is the fifth anniversary of Sea Wall Sports and Entertainment coming up on Sunday, March the 6th. You absolutely want to be in the building for that event. There is a very special announcement that the Seawall Sports and Entertainment family will be sharing with everybody that day. And I would think that you want to be there when it all gets shared and it all goes down. Because, of course, that, you know, it's always more fun when you're there. Always way more fun when you're there. So we also want to give our get well soon messages to our resident DJ, DJ Enya. So, hey, everybody feel better. Okay. Saying hello to all John Adams is so much always to check in on and to discuss and talk about with a lot, just a lot with the fifth anniversary coming up. So I'm trying to stay on top of everything, most notably also engaged with the Seawall Sports and Entertainment 5th Anniversary CBD products, folks. Quality CBD products by Ubiquitous Enterprises. Make sure you go to their website. You get 15% off the entire site when you use code CWALL5. We already know seawall and we know the five the number five is because it is the fifth anniversary year okay all right everybody so we were going to do a little bit of choose your own adventure but we're not going to do that we're not going to do that because we have things that we absolutely need to discuss and talk about and one thing that we haven't addressed and talked about yet so far in this month of february is that it is black history month so 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you all some of the Black History Month events going on that some of our professional teams are doing. And of course, we're going to we're going to sprinkle some sports in there as well. So we got the Caps update. We got a Nats update. We also have Wizards. And of course, we got to close it out with the Commanders because there's always at least one or two things to say about the Washington Commanders. All right. So everyone check in with a love button. A high five or something to let me know that you are in the building and you are ready to go with this week's rundown of everything going on in DMV sports. All right. Listen, folks, traffic advisory. I think this is important. If you are attending events at Capital One Arena in the coming days, you should be advised there may be road closures and parking restrictions around the district, which may impact travel to the arena. You know, it's a lot going on right? So just be safe, be cautious, okay? Make sure you check online as well. They've changed some, some rules and regulations around the vaccine, um, but I know that folks are still, you know, staying safe and wearing your mask as well, even though I don't think you have to wear your mask indoors, but I would just say wear your mask indoors to be safe anyway. But traffic advisory, please make note of it. It is very, very important. The Caps are celebrating Black History Month on Monday, February 28th, when the team hosts the Toronto Maple Leafs at Cap One Arena at 7 p.m. The evening will honor the organization's history, celebrate Black achievement in hockey, and highlight how the Caps are working to further grow the game in the area. There's also an honor to Washington, D.C.-based um, the Fort DuPont Cannons, the oldest minority hockey program in North America. So I think that is pretty dope. There will be a ceremonial puck drop with Capitals alumnus Bill Riley and his granddaughter, Chris Shonda, also former and first Black Captain Ryerson Rams will be in the building as well. So shout out to the Caps. That's all happening on this coming Monday. Now, I want to share something with you all. The Nets have throughout Black History Month been sharing some really cool facts. Right, Black history facts. Listen, I have been enjoying reading them so very much. So I said, hey, why don't I share these with the community? Because I think they're all pretty dope. So listen, here's one Black History Month fact that I absolutely loved. And I loved all of them. Let me just be clear. I loved all of them. But check this one out. Cumberland Posey played for the Homestead Grays in 1911 before becoming manager in 1916 and owner just a few years later. He was elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame in 2006 and named to the Nationals Ring of Honor in 2010. I thought this was a very, very cool update. And how about this one, you all? In celebrating Black History Month, Former Nationals manager Frank Robinson is the only player to be named both American League and National League MVP. He was elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1982 and named to the Nationals Ring of Honor in 2015. Talk about a dope Black History Month fact. Here's another one. Black-owned Ben's Chili Bowl has been a D.C. landmark since 1958 and an icon in Nats Park since 2008. Super dope that the Nats honored Ben's Chili Bowl. Oh, and y'all know I was all in with this one. You already know what time it is. Celebrating Black History Month, this fact, the grandfather of D.C.'s go-go music, Chuck Brown's song, Bustin' Loose, has been a long-standing, iconic home run song since baseball returned in 2005. I know you all have been at Nats Park, and they will play Bustin' Loose. You got to love the fact that that is DC, DC's go-go music on Chuck Brown. 
that's always fun whenever they play that. And here's another Black History Month fact. One of the Negro League's most powerful hitters, Judd Wilson, was elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame in 2006. He was named to the Nationals Ring of Honor in 2010. Super dope Black History Month facts shared by the Nats. Now, we're going to switch over to the Wizards for a minute. In terms of what they're doing for Black History Month, their Black History Month event is happening Friday, February 25th, where they are honor, honoring many in music. If you can see on the screen, you see Chuck Brown's name there again. You see Ben Chillyball name there again. Duke Ellington, producer Chucky Thompson. How about it? Okay. Marvin Gaye is on this list. We're seeing actress Regina Hall. We're seeing comedian Martin Lawrence. Pretty dope. It's a lot of names on here. And I felt like I wanted to share that because, of course, it's Black History Month. So I had to say something. And I just thought it was amazing and it was very cool how the teams just absolutely, you know, still honored the month. Sometimes because the month is so short. We can miss some things, but we weren't going to miss that. Y'all already know that Seaball Sports and Entertainment was going to find a way to bring them all together and make sure we shared some very cool Black History Month facts and make sure you all attend some of these events. But oh, by the way, don't forget traffic advisory, okay, and being safe. All right. Let's switch to the Wizards. Wizards fans, check in. Check in, Wizards fans. And I'm going to do something that I normally don't do with the Wizards. Sometimes I do it with the Commanders. Wizards fans, are, are you around? 24 more games left in the season, y'all. 24 more games left in the season. And here's what we're going to do. Right, we're on the other side of the season now, y'all. So for the Wizards conversation in this show, we're going to do something that I like to call Choose Your Own Adventure. And in Choose Your Own Adventure, those of you who are returning viewers of the show, you know that choosing your own adventure means there isn't necessarily a script, but there's always something to be said, okay? That is a seawall quote. You don't want to miss that, all right? Just because there's not necessarily a script doesn't mean that there's not something that needs to be said, okay? So what's up, Wizards fan? What is going on? How's everybody doing? 24 more games left in the season. How are you feeling about that? But while you're still determining what you would like to discuss from a choose your own adventure perspective, let me share this. Thomas Bryant is questionable for the game against the San Antonio Spurs. He's dealing with a right ankle sprain. Porzingis is still dealing with the right knee bone bruise and he will not play. Now, I don't know where the adventure is going to take us, but I would like to know, is it possible that the Wizards picked up an injured player? Could that be possible? Is that, what, is that what's happening amongst us? Because, hey, listen. We know before the all-star break, Coach Wes Unsell Jr. was very clear. He's not tanking. Now, I don't think anybody would come out and say, yep, we're going to tank. But I will say this. I think that he was sincere in his message of he doesn't know how to tank. He's just, this is not how it's built. This is not how this goes. So, there's a potential to, you know, to play in terms of 
in terms of, you know, a play in. But who, what, what's happening here with Porzingis? Now, remember I told you all when the trade happened, one thing you can always say is look at how the other fan base responds. And I must say this, nobody's missing or crying over Porzingis. But here's what I do want to bring up. Wallace, I see your question here, and it's a question that should be asked. Has Tommy Shepard been any better than Ernie? I will say this. I think in terms of the finesse of the contracts that he's able to get and then get rid of, I think yes. I think yes, Tommy Shepard has. He's been he he's definitely handled that way better than Ernie. And I think probably from the years of Ernie messing up, he learned a lot. But where he hasn't been too much different than Ernie is the results at the end of the season. So I think you get a little bit of both worlds. Yes, he knows how to get a contract that's just not good. Get that on, okay? But I will absolutely, absolutely say, what have you done for me lately? You have gotten rid of contracts, Tommy. And I think that the organization thanks him for that. But it's pretty much the same end result. So that's my answer to that question. What I can tell, he ends up with the finesse, doesn't he? But hey, the results are still the same in the end. So there's that. I do want to go back to some of the conversations, speaking of Tommy, in which he's mentioning Porzingis and Brad playing together. Now, we all know that Brad is out for the rest of the season. So, you know, it becomes a, is he talking about next year? So perhaps there's still some, some hope, of course, that Brad will be coming back and that if Porzingis is, is, is an unhealthy Porzingis currently, maybe perhaps he'll be healthy and Brad absolutely comes back next year. We shall see. I want to address this comment here because we're choosing our own adventure. Don't forget, this is a choose your own adventure session on the Wizards. And JoJo Diggs says, we got to trade Bill is why assets, first rounders, until then, just band-aids. Well, you know, hey. It's... <sighs> I don't know. I, I, I mean, and we talked a bit about this before, didn't we, you all? Where we feel like the trading bill plan, that ship sailed. And I still think either one or two things are going to happen. Brad is going to walk. You won't get anything for him. Or they're going to give Brad a an enormous contract, which many believe, myself included, that he is not proven he deserves from a return on investment perspective. Brad is a 10, he's been here 10 years. And y'all know how much I love Brad, but at the same token, you got to be objective, absolutely objective. And that price tag is going to hurt. That price tag is going to hurt. And I don't know if that if that price tag can be justified when you are thinking purely on the return on your investment. More to come. It'll be something to watch. But I definitely want to go back to, while we are continuing to, to choose our own adventure on this topic, another comment from Wallace, which is relying on Porzingis' health to be healthy is a bad plan. It's something to watch. Porzingis has not played one game yet. Let me repeat myself. Porzingis has not played in one game yet in a Wizards uniform. 
did the Wizards pick up an injured player and just, you know, going to hold and just sit out until Brad gets better in the hope that that's one of the pitches or the convincing um, topics or ways to say, Brad, please stay. Because we can't wait to see what happens with you and Porzingis out there. Got to keep our eyes on it. But he will be out again against the San Antonio Spurs. All right. Other than that, hey, look, Cal Kuzma has been great. I think Cal Kuzma has proven to be an asset. I very much enjoy um, how he plays and, 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 and what he's bringing to the team. Um, we've seen a bit of a shift in terms of KCP. He's looking a, a lot more comfortable after the trade deadline. He's not, you know, he looks like he's present and engaged. And, and wanting to, you know, and, and, is, and is able to actively contribute without a lot of, you know, drama behind the scenes. So we'll continue to see what happens. We'll watch it, right? Still more to come and see what, what Corey Kispert can bring. Rui Hachimura. Rui had some strong performances before the All-Star break. Um We'll see, of course, Gaff, and, and we know that Thomas Bryant is injured with that right ankle sprain, so he's questionable against the Spurs. But it's still more to come. But 24 games left. I want you all to, to tell me, drop it in the chat, do you think the Wizards will still make the playoffs? Is it a way for the Wizards to still make the playoffs? More to come. I want to know your thoughts on that. I really want to know your thoughts on that because we're going to pick that conversation back up when we get back on the show next week, okay? Commanders fans, where are you? Commanders fans, check in. Hit the love button. Check in. Make sure you're tagging a fellow Commanders fan in the chat and sharing accordingly with the Commanders community where are the commanders fans i believe the commanders fans are absolutely checked in now commanders fans y'all are used to this now y'all are used to this right here the choose your own adventure and right now it's good to play choose your own adventure with the commanders and see what we're going to talk about with the commanders because it's still pretty early on. We're in, you know, as you all know, we're in the NFL off season, right? And I think free agency starts around what March fourteenth, and then the new league year starts March the sixteenth. So there's a lot that can happen in just a short period of time. Um, the NFL combine is coming up. So everybody wants to be paying attention to the combine first week in March. That's next week, you know, um, and listen, I want to bring up this comment from Cameron Mingo and it's, is Hey, of course, yes. Landon Collins can get cut. Um, absolutely possible moving on um, from Brandon Sheriff. I think all of the above is possible and should be. I don't see anything holding them back. There's nothing in, I mean, what would, what would stop them from doing such? Um, I know, and we all have heard the conversations and reports about them still trying to keep Brandon, but hey, might be time to move on from that perspective with the new with the new tight ends coach juan castillo we also know that one has also has a a background as being an offensive line coach so hey if brandon is asking for too much money then it might be that one you know reaches back we go back to what we discussed before and that's what's your pitch and people sometimes they like to play and follow behind trusted advisors trusted coaches trusted teammates 
So Juan may have some pull with other offensive linemen that are potentially coming available. Here's one thing that I want to encourage and share with the Seawall Sports and Entertainment audience. And that is simply this. If I didn't win with you, you are not untouchable. Okay? Pay attention to those teams and organizations that win championships. They don't stay married to people long on the team. They will let people walk. They'll let them go. They'll trade. They'll use, they'll use their cap space. They're not afraid to make a move for somebody that's good today. Commander's family, get into that mode. Get into that win now mode. Not the rebuild mode. Not the, it's going to take three to five years to do this. Because that's not how the league is operating right now. The league is operating in a, I want the Lombardi trophy today. Because I don't got, I don't have two, three years for a Lombardi trophy to pop up in my organization, in my establishment. I want it now. So I think that is the mindset of, of thinking in terms of shift and evolve and who is going to win again next year. Because, hey, listen, I think that we all really need to look at what's happening across the league. Some of these quarterbacks, these young quarterbacks, they good. I mean, like, really good. So, look, and I'm not going to get on that soapbox because y'all know I, I can go off on that topic. And I will probably soon in the future, of course, when we bring it back up. But I think what is important is simply this. Pay attention to the moves of the championship teams. Pay attention. They draft well, and they don't cut any shorts when it comes to free agency. None. And if I didn't win with you, these, I mean, what are we here for? What are we doing here? Win now. Got to keep that mentality because it's it's huge and it's real. The team absolutely, listen, this is not a draft. And I'm going to keep saying this because I absolutely wholeheart. They can't miss. They can't miss in a draft. They need to fill gaps with top talent. Raw talent, that's all. Talent, talent. Talent, talent. Who can get out there and start? And people have told me that that is unrealistic. And let me tell you something. That's not true. And how do we know that that's not true? Because we've watched a season field and a playoff field of veterans that have been top tier for a very long time. And we've watched some rookies tear it up out there on the field so please don't tell me that you got to give somebody some time yeah that person you have to give time but there's some people who are drafting folks that can perform and win now i think that the commanders need to really be thinking in win now mode because that is where we're seeing the league shift all that three four years business that's not what these that's that, that's not what these people doing Will the commanders catch up to this new frame of thinking? It all remains to be seen. And we're going to keep watching and we're going to keep paying attention because we know that time is coming. It's coming through fast. Next week, combine, what is it? Week after that, free agency. We're going to have a lot to talk about. Okay, you guys? Listen, again, reminder. Fifth anniversary. 
fifth anniversary, March the 6th, Sunday, March the 6th. You want to go to the Seawall Sports and Entertainment website to get your tickets. You want to be in the building for certain. I cannot wait to see everybody there. So listen, you guys, keep tuning in. We're going to keep bringing you all of the highlights. All right. And I'm going to see all of you guys again very soon. Stay safe. You're not on the field yeah. or, or ice. Or ice. Or on the couch. From the DC, to DC, this is Coach from the Couch with your host, C. Wall. Delivering coverage for yeah. all DC sports teams from the hometown yeah. perspective. Nats, Skins, Mystics, DC United, Washington Wizards, Caps. My name's C4 and I'm a PG girl. Down for my skins. I don't know if you heard. If you like watching sports, then I am your girl. Sit.